We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or those of you joining us live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. It's our pleasure to provide this very special online worship experience today. Please share your comments throughout the service and please share the link with others after the service for their benefit as well. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. Welcome and what a joy it is to have you for the very last Sunday of 2023 on the CBS Family Service. I will be your moderator, Kerika Giri, and it's a great joy to be here, to be alive on the very last Sunday. Why don't you now join us as I welcome the CBS Family Service worship team to lead us in a time of praise and worship. If I were you, I'd be up on my feet ready to praise. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. A king has been born to reign on high and to bring light in the darkness. And we have gathered here to rejoice in the King of Kings as we proclaim of his name and declare that he reigns on high and he is a awesome God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says that a son has been born and he has been given as a wonderful counselor, the Prince of Peace, the mighty God. And that is why we've gathered today to praise his name and to glorify his name in dance and in praising and in glory for he reigns on high and he has brought light in the darkness. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Are you ready to join me this day as we praise the King of Kings? Hallelujah! Awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God, I give you praise, I give you praise, awesome God, awesome God, you wanna know some God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God, I give you praise. Thank you. 
one more time. Hey. I want you to teach you at times. Can we go? We love you.
ni kwako baba ni kwako sifa ni kwako zote ni kwako heshima ni kwako mamlaka ni kwako ni kwako tunaimana sifa zote kwako I know you've been blessed by that amazing time of worship. And now it's time to listen to the word. To bring us the word for this very last Sunday is Reverend Kwame Rubadiri. He is the head of digital here at Sitam. And as he brings us the word, it's going to be a time of reflection, a time of looking back to the year 2023 as we talked about in his presence. And right after he's done, a time of prayer and the worship team will be back to lead us into another session of worship. So why don't you help me welcome our speaker of today, Reverend Kwame Rubadiri. Thank you. Thanks, Kerry. 2023 is over. Yes. And now a time to look back. Indeed. Surely we can learn a lot from one year. We can. There's so many things that have happened. I'm looking forward to that. We have two hashtags running. The first one is hashtag in its presence and for the sermon hashtag at, at the, the end, end of, of the, the day. day. I love it. <laughs> Karibu sana. Thank you so much, Kerry. Always good to have you with us. Thank eh? you. Bless you. Thank you so much for joining me on this, the very, very last day of the year 2023. My name, as you've heard, is Kwame Rubadiri, and it is a joy and a privilege to have you join us wherever you are on this very last day of the year 2023. Now, I'd like to speak from the subject, uh, if it's okay with you, uh, entitled, When It Is All Said and Done. When It Is All Said and Done. And you've probably heard that before. It's a phrase that we often use when we come to the end of something or there's a lesson that you and I want to learn, having experienced something. When it's all said and done. You can type that in the chat section below and certainly pass it on, pass the link on for this service to a friend, because I believe God has a word for us, even as we say goodbye to 2023. Allow me to read from a text uh, of the Bible. It's actually the last two verses of uh, the Book of Wisdom, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and verses 13 and 14. Now, the version I want to read from, and then I'll read from a slightly more um, familiar version. Uh, the version I want to read from is called the Voice Translation. Voice translation was put together in the early 20th century by a group of scholars who wanted to sort of intertwine uh, a correct meaning, a, a more synthetic meaning of the text, either Hebrew or Greek, uh, that would be contemporary for us uh, today. So the Bible is written in such a way that you, you have the text itself, uh, you have a little bit of an interpretation or an explanation uh, in a box or in a paragraph set aside, uh, so that you are able to follow the general meaning of what this particular text is seeking to say. So if you find an opportunity to get hold of the voice translation, I highly recommend it to you. You can find it online, actually, as part of the Bible Gateway. Uh, but I want us to read the last two verses of the last chapter of uh, the book of Eccl Ecclesiastes. And I'm reading uh, from the voice translation. And when all is said and done, here is the last word. Worship in reverence the one true God and keep his commands. For this is what God expects of every person. Verse 14 says, for God will judge every action, including everything done in secret, whether it be good or evil. Now, for those of you who'd like to hear a more familiar translation, let me read from the New King James Version, the very same two verses. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all, or this is the whole duty of man. Verse 14 says, for God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Well, if you've made it to this point of 2023, you have a lot to be grateful for because our world has gone through a great deal. So many things happened in the world this year. After two years of COVID, we looked forward to at least a year of no restrictions for travel, 
uh, no social distancing uh, restrictions, a little bit more freedom. Uh, but this was very quickly followed by violent clashes and attacks, uh, civil unrest in countries uh, like uh, Sudan, right here in the African continent, and then a terrorist attack, which took place on October the 7th in uh, the nation of Israel. And that's still ongoing today as uh, the Israeli forces and Hamas are locked in a, a, a series of conflicts uh, that seem to have no end. And we continue to pray for that region. We continue to pray about the end to the war in Ukraine and hoping that all of these conflicts in different parts of the world can be resolved at some point or other. But a whole year has passed and it seems like human beings, um, you and I included, we're still trying to solve the problems that bring us conflict uh, one against the other. We also heard in September from the World Meteorological uh, Organization that this was the hottest year on record around the world, that we would reached temperatures we've never reached before. Uh, the situation with respect to um, uh, the, the glaciers melting or temperatures in the deserts just going through the roof, and even our own experiences wherever we've lived, we found that the weather just became that much more uncomfortable. But I think the biggest story around the world for 2023 was the rise and the huge expansion of artificial intelligence. Everybody seemed to be talking about AI, and it took the digital space by storm most likely affecting you in some way or, or another, whether it's through chat GPT or any of the other uh, AI, AI um, offerings that have been available to us, impacting every area of life from education to business to health and even personal privacy. Because somebody could so easily ask a computer to generate a picture of you or you doing something that you've never done before and you beginning to wonder, is this actually me or people wondering is this actually you? We have not seen anything like this in decades of our experiences here on the earth. And despite the fact that the world was experiencing so much turmoil, so many changes over time, we also had changes in our own nation. Those of you who uh, lived here, in, uh, living here in Kenya or have spent some, any length of time here in the nation of Kenya, you know that we started off the year going through famine and drought uh, very, very severe, especially in the northern parts uh, of the nation and how so much livestock was killed. Some people lost their lives as a result of that as well. But now as we get to the close of, close of the year, we're going through flooding and uh, extreme conditions uh, as El Nino has its effect and impact on our nation. We also went through difficult social times. There were demonstrations and riots and business interruptions and disruptions that took place uh, in the uh, middle part of, of the year uh, as people began to protest um, various economic decisions being made uh, by our government. And now we're finishing the year with a suffocatingly high cost of living and people wondering how do we solve the problems of all of these uh, uh, political decisions, economic decisions that have impacted our nation and that have impacted our lives personally and collectively. But then at a personal level, there are things that you and I did not foresee, we did not expect, and they happened regardless. Some of us lost loved ones this year. I had to say goodbye to a beloved sister-in-law uh, who after a long illness went to be with the Lord. And that happened to so many other uh, families and uh, dear friends uh, across the nation uh, throughout 2023. But then others were able to start families. Many got married, many settled down, and God blessed with children, God blessed with babies. And this was such a wonderful sign of looking forward to a future uh, of hope and looking forward to something uh, that God will bless in the coming days. Some of us traveled to places we had never before expected. The wonderful thing about that is that you had this opportunity because COVID was no longer an issue. In fact, President Biden uh, by mid-year announced that it was no longer a pandemic and the World Health Organization very quickly followed suit and said the same thing. But you may have had the opportunity to go to a place you'd never visited before. And now you had the opportunity to connect with people, uh, connect with individuals or even a culture that you had not, not known uh, before. 
they say that at least 80% of travelers around the world and a good three, 400 million people traveled around the world this year, 80% were able to go to a place they'd never been to before. So there were aspirations, there were hopes, there were desires that were being fulfilled by people who uh, had suddenly grasped and got hold of 2023 um, with both hands and said, I'm going to make the most of this life. I'm going to make the most of this year. We also saw the amazing way in which dear friends and those who perhaps are known to us, recovered from long illnesses, experienced the healing of God. Others didn't. Uh, others passed on and uh, went on into glory. And then some of us took the risk of starting a business, doing something that we had never done before and trusting that it was going to work out. And for some, it did. And for some others, you're still in there and I want to encourage you to stay committed uh, because it's not the end. Um, you, you may have some struggles, you may have some difficulty, but you started, you took the risk and it's worth it to see it through and not to give up. I know some people uh, who start small businesses and they say that uh, three out of five small businesses don't always make it through the first year. Uh, but if you're one of the two out of five who are still at it, I encourage you to keep going. So. I've said all that to say that life is lived forward, it is often said, or the saying goes, but it is understood backwards. So we want to look back at the last 364 days of 2023 and ask God to help us to understand a little bit more about ourselves and of course, uh, more importantly, a little bit more about our relationship with him and our relationship with one another. Today, as we say farewell, to 2023, as we reflect upon a year of profound changes, uh, exciting things, and also devastating impact upon lives and upon our culture, upon the environment all over the world. There are two things that we're called upon to do from our text today. Here in Ecclesians, the, uh, Ecclesiastes, I'm sorry, uh, the, the uh, uh, Book of Wisdom, one of the three major books of wisdom, we are told to do two very important things when all is said and done at the end of the day, at the end of the year. And the first of these is to worship God, is to worship the one true God. Now you may say to yourself, well, it's been a terrible year for me. I've, I've gone through all kinds of struggle. Why, why would I take the time to worship God? Why would I take any interest in uh, recognizing who God is and what he's done for my life. Well, the first thing is because you're here. If God hadn't watched over you and I, we wouldn't have this conversation. So I want you to type in the chat, chat section below, or you can post it on X or on Facebook. Thank you, Lord, that I'm still here. Thank you, God, for your grace on my life. Any one of those two phrases uh, you can put into the chat section there as your word of thanks as your uh, gra gratitude to God for the grace that he has shown to you. Now, the Bible says to worship God. Another version says to fear God, which bas basically is to reverence the greatness and the goodness of God, to give him the due respect. Now, you, as I said before, you may not feel like doing that, but the fact is he's still in charge. He still calls the shots. And he's the one who has been watching over our lives, extending his amazing grace to us throughout the year, through every single year. You may not have noticed all the near misses uh, that could have taken your life out, that could have harmed you in some way, that could have interrupted your, your business or your work or your life in a, a way that changes you forever. Maybe there were accidents that didn't involve us, but they involved other people. There were sicknesses that seemed to grab hold uh, of, of uh, other people that you know, but then you recovered. You may have had the same sickness, but you're here and you recovered. You, you didn't succumb to, to, to the attacks uh, that may have uh, been thwarted long before you knew anything about them. There are things that we have no knowledge that could have happened in our lives, but because God intervened and God said, no, I don't want this to happen in your life. We're still here and we can still reverence God. 
And for those who are still having to bear the burden of some illness or some sickness or some injury because of an accident, you're still here. God still has work for you to do. And there's still the power of God available to you and I to bring healing and hope. The fact is that God has watched over you and I, and he's watched over our families. There are certain things he allowed us to experience. There are certain things that he kept from us so that we would not have to carry that burden any longer. And so we need to recognize this wonderful God who has kept us, who has watched over us. We need to glorify him. We need to thank him. We need to recognize that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, as the psalmist says, we would not have been able to survive to the end of 2023. Like um, uh, Job says in the other book that's considered the book of, of wisdom, after losing his family, after losing his wealth, after losing his possessions, he said, the Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we take that attitude upon us, if we take that attitude of recognizing the, 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 the great uh, authority and, and wisdom and favor of God over our lives, and we build that relationship, it helps us to understand and to make sense of all the difficult times and all the good times that we have to go through. And so if the writer of uh, Ecclesiastes is reminding us, worship or fear God, recognize that none of us would be here. None of us would have accomplished the things that we accomplished in 2023. None of us would have survived the things that we survived in 2023 had it not been for God on our side. He deserves all the glory for the love, for the favor, for the protection, and above all, for the presence that he poured out upon our lives. Our theme this year as a church at Christ is the Answer Ministries was in his presence. And the presence of God is what has sustained us. The presence of God is what has kept us and has kept us going, looking forward to the fulfillment of the purpose that is still ahead of our lives. That's the first thing that this last chapter, last two verses of Ecclesiastes asks us to do. The second is to keep his commands, keep his commands. Now, this word uh, in the Hebrew, the, in the original Hebrew, is translated in a very interesting way because the idea is not just for us to do what the Word of God says, which is the implication here, but to also make sure that it, it is such a part of our lives that we apply it. Keeping the, the commands of God means that we're doing what God asks us to do. And a wonderful way in which this word is translated is the whole idea of a fence being placed around you. That doing whatever God says is like putting up barricades, putting up a fence, putting up a, um, a wall around you that protects you from all of the damage, all of the attacks, all of the, uh, uh, the, the environment, as it were, that surrounds us. And so when we keep the word of God, when we do what God says to us, we are actually building a hedge of protection around us. That word is applied to our lives in such a powerful way that it creates this hedge of protection around us. And so God wants us to not only worship him, but to get to know what he wants to happen in our lives, to get to know the word that he has delivered to us, to get to know the Bible. Now, some of you are finishing your one year long uh, or through the Bible in a year today. And uh, I congratulate you. I, I, I give, give you know, kudos to, to sticking with it and reading the Bible, going through the entire Bible in a year. If you've never done that, I encourage you to make it one of your resolutions in 2024. The, the Bible, God's word, uh, is not just you know, a group of stories put together. It's not just a, a, a group of instructions that God gives to us. It is actually life-giving and life breathing. It speaks to every situation you and I go through, what, regardless of what that situation, situation might be, good or bad. And because it is a word to help us in any one of those situations, it is God's way of building a hedge of protection around us so that we'll always be covered, we'll always be taken care of. Now, as I said before, this word, and God's presence in our lives has kept us from attacks. It's kept us from deceptions. It's kept us from the infiltration of the enemy. 
and all the, the lies that the enemy might seek to say to us. Some of those lies appeared on social media. Uh, they may have been part of bully tactics that were aimed at you. They may have been part of the misinformation that's gone all over the world to give you a whole different view on the truths and not just about God, but about the situations around us and other people for that matter. It is God's word that helps us to separate lies from the truth, to separate good from evil, and to help us to put our, our lives in line with what God has inten intended for us. So let God's word protect you. Let the truth of what God has said and revealed to us be a protection all around you. When all is said and done, these two things, worshiping God and obedience and the keeping of his word, are the two things that we should take with us as we close the year and begin a new one. Because we should respond to all of the changes that take place in our lives. We should respond to all of the conflicts, um, both present and future. We should respond to all of the confusion that takes place either in our lives or around us. We should respond to all the chatter on social media and anywhere else that might try, try to mislead us. We should respond to all of these things by worshiping God and obeying his word. That's what's going to make sense of all of the things that have happened around us. That's what's going to make sense of the experiences that we've had to go through in the past. And that's what's going to prepare us for what's ahead in 2024. When all is said and done, worship and obey the one true God. I want to take some time now to pray for those who have really struggled. It's been a tough year. You've had to lay loved ones to rest. Um, you've lost work. Uh, you weren't able to finish uh, your education or the things that you had started. And you're thinking to yourself, what a wasted year 2023 has been. What a loss to me. And I want to encourage you that if you look through the lens of these two statements, worshiping, reverencing God, putting everything into his hands and asking him to help you make sense of it, and then committing yourself to do what he says, what he's commanded from his word, I believe that you will be on the right footing, regardless of the struggles and the burdens that you've been carrying in 2023, you'll be on the right footing to deal with 2024. You may be taking into 2024, the struggles of a tough economy. You may be taking into 2024 struggles with an illness that has been persistent. You may be taking into 2024 uh, a relationship that's really feeling like it's on its last legs. But I want to encourage you that God is walking with you. And if you reverence him, if you worship him, if you keep his commandments, 2024 could be the best year yet in your life and mine. Allow me to pray for you and with you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we recognize that you're the one who watches over us. You're the one who orders our steps. You're the one who helps us to go through periods of pain. You escort us through the valley of the shadow of death, but you always prepare a table in the presence of our enemies. You're the one, O oh God, who commands that goodness and mercy will follow us wherever we go until we come into your eternal presence. So I pray for my brother and sister who is going through a great difficulty, who perhaps has had no one say to them every single day of 2023 that God is with you and God is care, cares about what you're going through and God is watching over you and he will not let you go through this situation for no reason at all. And I pray that you, as you raise up and reveal the purpose of all the burdens that we've had to carry in 2023. We will find reason to honor you, to worship you, to reverence you, and to do the things that you ask us to do from your word in 2024. So I declare the blessing of the Lord upon everyone under the sound of my voice, all those who have been a part of the ministry of CBS, and all those who have heard this word today. May our lives never be the same as we move into a new year by your grace. So God, I pray that you lift up those who are wounded and brokenhearted. Pray that you'll bring healing to those who are still suffering weaknesses. Pray that you bring clarity to those who still 
suffer from the confusion and uh, the disruption of what has taken place this year. And I pray, O oh God, that your presence will be felt across this earth, despite all of the great challenges and turmoils and disruptions that we will have to go through. You're the one who watches over us. You're the one who keeps us. And you're the one who helps us. And so we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you so much. And the Lord bless your 2024. We now hand back to our moderator for the day, Kerry Kagiri. What a thought-provoking and inspiring message, Reverend Kwame. Thank you. I myself have gone back wow. to the moments that I've had this year, just as you mentioned them. Amen. Major transition. Yes. Maybe falling in love. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's still all right, too. <laughs> and also sad losses. I know. Uh, yeah. Just thinking about it and... Mm. God has brought us to this moment. Indeed. We're going to live forward, but Amen. it's good to look back. Back, yes. Thank you very much Blessings. for that. Thank you. We'll now pause and take a time for prayer. Let's believe together. We call on you, our God, who is merciful, who is gracious, who is mighty, who is loving. And Lord, as we think about where you brought us through the year 2023 up to this moment, we can only say, Ebenezer, this far you have brought us. Lord, you've taken us through moments of pain. You've taken us through fear. You've taken us through joy. And now we have a chance to close the curtain and look at the year 2024. We say glory be to you, O oh God. Lord, we ask you as we leave this place, we go only with your presence. Jehovah God, if your presence does not go with us into 2024, we don't want to go, O oh Lord. So, Lord, go with us. Go with our families. Lord, strengthen us. Father God, for those who are sick in their body right now, I want to pray in the name of Jesus that 2024 will be a time when they experience healing and, Lord, revival. I want to pray for the church of Jesus Christ for revival. I want to pray for the economy, my God, for revival. I want to pray, oh God, for the climate. Lord, we've seen the hottest year. Um, in the history, oh God. And Lord, you know, that has brought drought. It has brought hunger. Jehovah, we ask you for freedom. We ask you for victory, oh God, over every circumstance. And Lord, we invite you that you may hold our hands as we go into the year 2024. Thank you for the ministry that is the CBS Family Service. Thank you for those who are consistently walking with this service, giving to this ministry, O oh Lord. Just joining and this is their form of fellowship. Father God, we join together right now and we say thank you. Thank you for the digital space and the platform that you've given us, O oh God, to interact even with those who are not able to physically go to church, that they can experience your goodness over this platform. And now we say unto you, O oh God, who is able to do immeasurably more than we could ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. Lord, be glory, honor, praise, and adoration. And we pray this in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen, amen. As you say amen, why don't you type amen so that we know that you're there and that you are with us. Right now, Reverend Kwame and I will step out and the worship team will come back to take us into a moment before we get to giving. Jesus, we want to speak your name over every circumstance, Lord. The Lord, and as we end the year, Lord, we are speaking your name over every situation over our families, over the streets, oh God, as we declare that your name is powerful. Lord, we trust your name. Hallelujah. We trust your name. I just want to speak your name today. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence Oh God, I speak Jesus Oh yes Lord I just want to speak Lord, yeah I just want to speak the name of Jesus 
Till every dark addiction, Til every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope, declaring there is hope, and there is freedom. Oh God, I speak Jesus. Yes, cause your name is power. Your name
Jesus, your name is, your name is, oh Jesus. CBS family, it's time to give. One of my best times ultimately because God has provided and everything belongs to him. What a joy it is to participate in this way of worship, which is giving. Lord, we thank you that we have an offering to give to you. We give you this offering with joy and with a cheerful heart that, Lord, it may go back into whatever it is you desire for the church of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, even for those who are asking you at this moment, that you may give them opportunities in the coming year to give through resource. Lord, we look to you as our source and we thank you for this provision and now we give to you, Lord, accept every offering and every sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. CBS family, this is How to Give. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work here at SIDM. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. We have a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you happen to attend and even for our visitors. You can give via mobile money through the platforms M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933934. For the account name, please indicate the SITM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of any SITM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other SITM PayPal numbers remain operational. If you would like to make direct bank deposits, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch and the account number is 11 Two eight zero six one seven six three nine double zero. The Swift code KC double O K E N A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering, and every generous material support. God bless you. Allow me to welcome you to join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. We'll be having a live prayer service. Now what happens is that you can send in any prayer request and petition you have and the pastors will be praying and agreeing with you 
such an amazing time in prayer. Now the hashtag we've been using is hashtag in his presence and hashtag at the end of the day. Do not forget to engage and remember to use the annual Bible study guide. Now this is for a further study on our theme. Finally, I'd like to welcome you to not close this year without making the most important decision of your life before even choosing a partner. This is one of the biggest decision and it's a decision to follow Christ. It's a decision to turn around and make a 180 turn from your sin, move away from rebellion and to your maker. He is waiting for you. He is willing to receive you. And therefore, please text us on this number, 0728-221-221. It's actually our WhatsApp number. Why don't you send us a WhatsApp message? desiring to make this decision and somebody will get back to you and start this amazing journey with you. The journey of faith does need a family and so why don't you go ahead and do that and say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ today. As you make that important decision, I want to thank you for joining us today and throughout the year 2023. It's been a great, great time. I want to wish you the favor of the Lord upon you. I want to wish you God's blessings. And finally, we will have the benediction by our pastor who's coming in. Wow, amazing. 52 Sundays in 2023. And for all of them, we have had services here on Sitam Broadcast Service. Thank you for plugging in and for being with us. May the Lord bless you. This is our last Sunday of the year. And this far, the Lord has indeed brought us. We look forward to seeing you next year. And now may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. And may you enjoy a wonderful crossover and see you in 2024, God willing. <music>